What's up everyone, I'm Nick, welcome back. In this video, we're looking at the picker. And just like it sounds, this is the perfect component for any situation in your app when the user actually needs to pick from a couple different options. Now there are a bunch of different styles that we can use on our picker to format it and make it look differently. And certain styles are better for different types of data. So some are better with large sets of data when there's a whole bunch of options and others are better with small sets of data when maybe there's only two or three options. So we're gonna add a couple different pickers with a couple different styles and really get comfortable working with the picker. Welcome back everyone. As you already know, we're gonna cover pickers in this video. It's gonna be a nice and easy video again. So let's create a new file by right clicking the navigator, creating a new file. It will be a Swift UI view and let's call it picker bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, let's click resume on the canvas and let's get coding. So let's start off nice and simple by adding a picker to the screen. We will delete this text and let's add picker. Open the parentheses and we're gonna use the selection label content completion. Hit enter on that and we're gonna put all of these parameters in separate lines. So hit enter before selection, enter before label, enter before content. And we can see the default values here and we can see that in our preview. So right now the selection is a constant of number one and that's why this gray bar is on the number one. The label says picker, but we can't actually see the label in this format. So this label line is kind of irrelevant right now. And then the content, we have text of one and two and then the tag of one and two. And we can actually see these texts in our picker. So if we click resume on the live preview, we can scroll between number one and two right now. And of course we can add more numbers to this picker. So if we copied this and pasted it a couple times, we could then update these values in one, two, three, four, five. And of course we have to update the tags as well. Now, I just want to note here that the text is what we actually see on the picker, but the tag is what actually gets selected when we move to that choice. So when we go to number two, the text says tag, but we are actually selecting number two. And right now the selection is only a constant of number one, but we can update the selection by making it a variable. So as we've done before, let's create a variable outside of the body. We'll do at state var selection. And we're going to use of type string because I find that strings are a little easier to work with in pickers. And we're going to set this equal to number one for now. And for this selection, let's just bind it to here. So we will do money sign selection. And of course, our selection is now a string. So these tags need to be strings. So let's convert these numbers to strings. So we'll just add quotes on both sides of them. And now when we use our picker, let's resume on the canvas. We can now scroll through each of these and this selection is being updated. And of course we can use this selection somewhere else in our app. So for right now, let's put this picker in an AV stack. Let's add a V stack, open the brackets. I'm going to cut and paste the picker inside and above the picker, I'm going to add a H stack open the brackets and then we'll add a text saying age with a colon and on the right we will add another text and this one we're going to actually just put in the selection. The selection of course is a string already so we can just add selection in here. And when we change the selection on our picker to number four we can see that the age stack above with the number actually gets updated in real time. So this is super helpful if you ever have a situation where users need to select from a, an array of choices and we want to update that or use that somewhere else in our app. Now, of course, if this is age, we don't want the numbers one to five, but we might want like 18 to 100. And no one wants to type in this text and tag 100 times. So as you could have guessed, we can add a for each statement within this picker. So we can do for each open the parentheses, we can use this range with an integer option. And let's do the range from 18 up to less than 100. So 18 to 99. And we do that with the dot dot less than sign. We've learned this in a previous video. 
And for the content, let's hit enter. Let's get rid of this little section here. And we're going to loop on these numbers. So I'm just going to call this number. And for each loop, let's add a text. And let's convert the number to a string with the forward slash open close parentheses number. And of course, we need to add that tag so our selection gets updated. So we'll do dot tag. And in here, we need a string because the selection is a string. So we again will use that forward slash open close parentheses number. And when we resume our preview again, we can now see that we are between 18 and 100. And we have this awesome picker that goes all the way up to 99. I do want to note that this picker is not that customizable. So like this gray bar, we can't really change right now. But there's a few things that we can do. We can add a background to the whole picker. So underneath the picker, we can call dot background and we can do maybe color dot gray dot opacity 0.3. Doesn't look very good, but you get the gist. And we can change the font and color of the actual text in here. So this text we can call dot font dot headline dot foreground color dot red. And we now have a little bit of a customized picker. This doesn't look too good, but I wanted to just show you that we could do that. So I'm going to get rid of that background and comment that out. I'll leave this as red for now. And I want to show you guys that this picker right now is in the style of a wheel. That's what this wheel is. So if we, so underneath the picker, we can add a modifier called picker style. And if we start typing picker style, we can see that there are a couple options here. And if we add in the wheel picker style, open and close parentheses, the preview is actually not going to change because that's what the default picker style is. This is a wheel. But we can change this to some other cool things. So I'm going to show you two of them now. So this wheel picker style is great when we have these large data sets and we want to quickly scroll through all of these numbers. But I think at least these other picker styles are really better for smaller data sets with less content. So like maybe three different options. So to do that, let's actually create a new picker. So I'm going to highlight this whole V stack. I'm going to hold the command button and press backslash to comment it all out. And we're just going to start from scratch here. So in the body, let's add another picker. Open the parentheses and we're going to use the selection label content. Again, let's put all of these on separate lines. And this time we're going to add dot picker style and we're going to start typing picker style. Look at our options and we're going to select the menu picker style. Open and close the parentheses and this is possibly my favorite one. And just to show you guys how it works first, we can actually now see in the preview, we don't see this content immediately, but we see the label, which we did not see in the last one. So right now it says picker and when we click on it, a little menu actually pops up and it has all of our options. So this is a really cool UI effect that seems pretty professional to me and I definitely like using in apps. Uh, so let's customize this picker a little bit just to give this a real world example. So for the label, let's put the text on a separate line here. We can customize this label however we want. So what I'm gonna do is put this text, I'm gonna hold the command button, click on the text, embed it into an H stack. I'll put another text below it and in this bottom text we'll actually just add the selection in. So right now it is one but we're going to change that. And let's change it from picker to maybe filter. We'll pretend like this is a filter on our app. And let's format this a little bit. Let's give it a font of headline. Let's give it a foreground color of white. Let's give it a background color of color dot blue. Let's add some padding before the background. So we'll call it dot padding. Let's give it a little extra horizontal padding, dot padding, and we'll do dot horizontal. Let's give it a corner radius of 10. And maybe we add a dot shadow. Let's use the color option and let's use the color to match the background. So we'll do color dot blue dot opacity 0 0.3. Let's keep the radius 10. Let's keep the X zero and the Y maybe we'll do 10. So it moves down a little bit. And now we have this really cool button. 
And then let's update the choices that we can put into this filter. So let's create a data array at the top. Let's say let filter options of type, and it's going to be an array of string. And we'll set this equal to an array. And let's fill in the array with a couple different options. We'll do uh, most recent, comma, most popular, comma, and most liked. Just maybe three examples of different filters you might have in your app. And let's just update the selection right now to be by default on most recent. So I'll copy this and just paste this in here. And then, of course, the selection, instead of just being a constant, we are going to bind it to our selection with the money sign selection. And then we need to get our filter options into the content of our picker. So down here where we have the content, I will delete the content and add a for each statement. Open the parentheses. And we're going to use the ID completion just because I think it is the easiest. The data, of course, will be our filter options. The ID, we will just use backslash dot self. Basically just gives an ID to each item. And then the content, we will hit enter. And we're looping through the filter options. So each loop will be an option. And then for each loop, we will add a text with the option. And of course, when we select that, we want to actually update the selection. So we do that by adding a dot tag with the option. Zoom out here a little bit so you can see. And now we have this really cool filter button. Let's click resume on the canvas. That right now it says most recent, but we can click it. We get this cool little pop up. So, and then we can change our filter to maybe most popular. And when we click it, the filter actually updates automatically with a new title. We change it to most liked. And I do want to mention here that these rows within the menu are not that customizable, but we can add icons to each of these rows. So we could put this text into an H stack and then in that H stack we could add an image with a maybe system name of heart.fill. And I'll put the tag on the H stack itself. I don't think it really matters. Uh, but just to show you guys that on the filter we could have little filter icons, which is a nice little UI effect. Now before we wrap up this video, I want to show you guys one more picker. So let's again highlight this whole picker and we're going to comment it out with the hold the command button and press the backslash button. And we're going to add another picker. This will be a picker. Open the parentheses. We'll use the selection label content. Put these on separate lines. You guys should be used to this by now. And this time we are gonna call dot picker style. Type in picker style. And we are going to look for and use the segmented picker style. Open and close parentheses. And you can see immediately that the picker now looks a little different. It has this nice segment. So let's again connect this picker to our filter options. So the selection will be money sign selection. The content will be a for each. And this time, just as a practice, we use the ID in the last picker. Let's just use the regular data completion in this picker. And because we don't have that ID where we call backslash dot self, we now need to loop on the array indexes instead of the actual options. So we will call filter options dot indices. And the content here is going to be the index because we're looping on the index and the text we will call filter options. Open the square brackets and in here we will put in the index. So here we're accessing a specific index from the data array. And then of course we'll add a tag and we're going to do the same thing filter options brackets index. So let's check out what we got here. And now we have this segmented array where we have the three different options and we can click through these with this nice little animation that's by default to select the different options. And when we click these, as you know, this selection is getting updated behind the scenes. So this selection is pretty common when you have like two or three options in your app. So I've seen this a lot on like maybe dating apps like Tinder or something 
when you are setting up your profile and you need to select like if you are male or female or non-binary, you could use one of these segmented pickers. Now again, this is not too customizable, but there are a few things that we can do that I want to show you guys. Uh, so on this picker, we can call it .background and we'll do color.red. Doesn't look very good, but we can add that background color. So I'm going to comment that out. And there's actually an override that we can do to customize this picker. Because this picker is something called a UI segmented picker, which actually comes from UI kit, which is the predecessor to Swift UI. So in UI kit, you could customize this and we can import some of those options over into our code here. So I'll show you guys how to do that. It's a little more advanced, but I think you guys can handle it. And in the init of this view, we'll call init, open and close the parentheses, open the brackets. And we've done videos on inits earlier in this course. This is just the function that runs basically when this view is created. And we can call UI segmented control dot appearance dot selected uh, segment tint color. And you can see here that we need a UI color for this. So we'll hit enter and we'll set this equal to UI color dot red. We click resume on the canvas. We can now see this override has actually made our segmented, the selected color red. And this looks great, but it is important to note here that when we call this UI segmented control dot appearance, it is actually going to update all of the segmented controls in our app because this is overriding the appearance for all segmented controls. So for our purposes right now, this doesn't really matter because this is the only one that we have in our project. But if you had an app with different screens that had different segmented controls, they would all end up with the same appearance. So I've never ran into that issue. It's like a very one off thing, but I just wanted to note that here because this UI segmented control dot appearance does work differently than our typical modifiers. We can do a little more using this method. We can call UI segmented control dot appearance dot set title text attributes. And as you can see for the attributes, we're going to need an NS attributed string dot key. So let's create a variable to hold these attributes. We will do let attributes of type and we're going to use this here. We're going to do an array of NS attributed string dot key and then colon any. We're going to set this equal to an array. And the first item in this array will do dot. And we do actually have a whole bunch of options here. I didn't think we were going to get the completion, but we do. So we get all these custom ways that we can customize this text now. And I'm going to call that foreground color, which we know changes the text color. And this is actually a dictionary. So we need this colon and then we can put white. We'll do colon and then we'll do UI color dot white. And it's important to note here that we need to call UI color because all of this is coming from UI kit, which supports UI color and this foreground color. If we hold the option button and click on foreground color, we can actually see that it is a UI color object. So if we just did the regular color from Swift UI, this would crash. But UI color works and we can then take this attributes and put it into our title attributes here. And then we need to tell it for what state. So we want these attributes for when it is selected or when it's not selected or what. So we're going to call dot selected. And now we can resume our canvas and when it is selected, we have updated the text foreground color to white, which looks pretty good to me. And you guys can play around this on your own time by changing different attributes and setting them for different states of the appearance. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys real quick how we can customize this segmented control because this is not native to Swift UI and it's a little difficult to implement, but it's definitely something that I see a lot of people asking on Stack Overflow. So that's it for this video. I apologize if this was a little long, but you guys are now experts at pickers. And you'll find that pickers are used in a ton of apps because there will be a lot of times in your apps where users get to pick through a couple different options. And a picker is a perfect, easy, elegant way to implement that feature. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And I'll see you guys in the next video.